back out live to News 2's Andy Cordan. He has been there all day at different entrances of the school, seeing uh, those school buses come and go, the law enforcement officers, parents. And uh, Andy, can you give an update on what the situation is like there now? We're at uh, 440 p.m. Well, I'll tell you, there's been a little bit of activity. You can't tell right now, but just moments before you came to my live shot, had a bunch of cops come out, a bunch of cops go in, and more telling, and this would go back to what was said at the press conference, OEM just brought in two light, I don't know, portable kits with generators, so that tells me they're going to have plenty of light in case there was uh, evidence to be located or processed in the parking lot. Uh, certainly they have lights inside the building, but earlier today we also told you how we saw portable generators coming in, so they were already preparing for this, and Don Aaron also told us that it was going to be at least two days here, and, you know, with that many shots being fired, eight, nine, ten, as you'll hear in just a second, there's a lot to go through. In fact, let's talk to a uh, lady that lives just down the street, and she heard the whole thing. Check it out. I have four grandkids here, and I, I mean, I can be thankful, but I can be, I am so sad for these parents and kids. Of, it's very tragic. You know, I don't feel like crying at many news stories, but today that was almost an exception because this is one of the most horrific things we've covered. Never seen so many cops flying. And you got to, I'll tell you what you're going to see in that body cam. You're going to see heroism. You're going to see guys going in, not thinking about themselves, going up the stairs and taking care of business. So it's sad that six people are dead and three little babies, but there's a classroom of kids hugging their moms and dads tonight, probably because these cops were so heroic. That's what I believe out here right now. Andy, we're six hours after this event happened and with them bringing lights and it looks like the investigators are going to be on the scene well into the night. Does that give you a hint at the scope and the oh, size yeah. of the crime scene? Yeah, well, I think that's part of it. I think what they're doing, number one, is they just want to be thorough. So maybe, maybe some of this started outside and they want to make sure, you know, some of these... I mean, it's a, it's a church and a school. I don't know how good the lighting is there. They're going to make sure the lighting is exactly what it needs to be. Uh, and, and as you know, Bob, uh, like reconstruction, they, want, they can do that with accidents. They can do that at crime scenes. They literally can build and plot point. So when you go to court later or you bring it up in any capacity, later on it's computerized, it's digital. And they literally can take you to a virtual crime scene and show you every aspect of the crime scene, and I'm sure they're doing that right now. That's how the capability they have with their forensics teams. So to do that well, you need lighting, uh, and certainly that's probably what they're doing outside. And then inside, perhaps they need uh, the same amount of lighting. But as you heard from the uh, woman in my soundbite, I'm, I'm not sure if they actually played that soundbite, but she said she heard six, seven, eight shots initially, and then another chorus, another volley of gunfire, presumably either the second round from this woman or perhaps the police were on scene by that time and they were neutralizing the threat. But that tells you that you are dealing with a massive amount of shell casings and each shell casing has a story, each bullet has a story. Where did it come from? What was the trajectory? Uh, you know, where did it go? How did it land? And you know, that's what they're going to be looking at now. The forensics. What? Where did these guns come from? As you heard in the press conference, at least two guns possibly legally obtained. Uh, I've got sources that tell me they, they don't really have a uh, criminal history that they know of on this lady, but, uh, you know, more will come out. But, but at this point, you start tracing some of the things that you can tangibly, like weapons. Where did you get them? Uh, where, what kind of bullets? Uh, you know, just the fact that you had a, a woman do this is unusual. Just the fact you had um, AR-style weapons in a, in a former student go up and do this. I mean, there's a lot of odd elements about this. This is typically, you know, the young man who went in there who was angry. That, that's a different scene we got going here. So it's, it's certainly a lot to uh, dissect and to see what's going on. But to answer, and I'm pontificating now because I've been doing this for six hours. But the, the long and short of it, Bob, is I think they're not going to leave any bullet casing or any shred of evidence or, or, or a shard of glass because you heard an officer got hurt by their hand uh, unexamined. Un they want to see, you know, what, what it is, what happened. And I guarantee when they release the body cam tonight, it's going to be very difficult to watch, but you're going to definitely see some heroic actions.
When you talk about the shell casings, Andy, quickly, I, we don't know how many shots were fired, but it was quite a few. And each one of those casings has to be marked and tagged before they do the overview photograph of the crime scene, and that takes time. <clears throat> Yeah, and you guys have seen, I've done a, a million stories, and you always see those little yellow things on the yep. ground, and each one has a number. Well, in this case, you may have 30 or 40, you know, as the numerical representation on the little triangle, the yellow thing, by the evidence. And each one of those is evidence that they have to photograph, make sure they get the right lighting, the right shot. I mean, what is the significance? Where was that fired? And this is important, and this is why the TBI is involved here. What shots were fired from her? and what shots were fired from the cops, what shots hit and missed. A lot to put together. It's a uh, horrific crossword puzzle that eventually has to have all of the squares filled in.